flushing the key out of the attacker's hands is always the harder problem, right? And it really doesn't matter how fast I can change the authoritative servers unless I can revoke the key. Well, why, why not just do key? What would you do for key revocation? The problem is you don't know who has the key, and, and think about the scale you have here. We're talking in COM alone 30 million keys. And so key revocation lists have a problem of scale plus who signs them. Following the compromise hierarchy gets you into a chicken and egg kind of problem. The hierarchy's been compromised, so, you know, plus now I have, to, I have to pay an overhead of checking for the compromised key if I even know where to check. It's, it's doable, but it's not necessarily trivial. So I, I think it's, it's solvable, but it's not... It's not sort of, uh, you know, by, by the end of tonight, I'll have it done. By the end of this week, maybe I'll have it done. But at the end of tonight, I want it done. Uh, another problem we had in terms of the, the standard and getting this thing deployed is the way we set up existing DNS is we took the parent, EDU, and it stores the NS record that tells how to reach the child. And we called those things NS records. At the same time, who really knows who who really knows what the produced servers are? Who's got the authority to determine the produced servers are X, Y, and Z? Purdue. Purdue, right? Who needs to have that information in order to get to Purdue? The parent, EDU, right? So you have this sort of limitation in the existing DNS where Purdue determines who the real servers are. But if EDU doesn't know who they are, it does no good. Because I don't know the Purdue servers, I'm going to go to EDU, I'm going to say, where are they? The Purdue EDU is going to say, I think the servers are X, Y, and Q. I'm going to go to server Q, it's going to say, I'm not a Purdue server. Something must have been, gone wrong at the EDU zone. Does that actually happen, you think, in the, in the real system? Frequently. We have, a, we have a SIGCOM 2004 paper that actually looks at, uh, compares perceived theoretical robustness of the DNS with actual robustness of the DNS after you take into account misconfiguration. Well, user performance actually isn't that badly impacted because DNS is very robust. As long as one server works, you'll get your answer. And you'll pay a few extra milliseconds, but you won't really notice in your web browser. The actual redundancy of the system if something fails is far less than what the administrators would like because of this conflict. So we have this redundancy limitation. But more importantly, we have now the problem of, now that we're going to sign it all, who signs the information? Since the information in DNS is exactly identical, once it leaves that server, you don't know whether it came from the parent or the child. It's just the NS records for Purdue. So if you have the parent sign them, and the cache gets the parent version, there's no way to flush it out and get the child version. So we have a rule that says, look, the parent can't sign. It doesn't belong to the parent. The child has to sign them. And, and that creates somewhat of a, of a limitation. So what's the security-wise, what's the problem with this? So I go to EDU. In fact, back on my back one slide here. I what about two slides. I go to EDU and note that NS records were never signed. So as the attacker, what can you, what can you choose to do? You can send the valid DS record. If you, can go to, if you can go to EDU, you can get the valid DS record with a valid signature. You can send that plus a bunch of false server names pointing to whoever you want. And what will be the end effect on the resolver? Will the resolver believe those are the, the valid servers for Purdue? It, it will try asking them about Purdue. But the first thing it will ask them is it will say, give me your DNS key. And that false server has to give the real DNS key. Otherwise, it won't match the DS record. So you can go to the false server, but the false server either has to send the wrong key, in which case he's revealed as not being the right guy, or send the real key, in which case I haven't done any harm. Uh, so either I'm going to send the, I'm either going to report the right data, 
in which case it's fine, I got redirected to the wrong spot, or I'm going to report the wrong key or the wrong signature information, and it's going to be revealed that that's an attack. The only problem is I don't know who attacked me. I go, I ask EDU, what are the servers for Purdue? It says the servers are Q, R, and S. I ask Q, Q doesn't have the right credentials. I ask R, not the right credentials. I ask S, not the right credentials. I know at this point I can't get the desired Purdue information. I don't know whether it's the fact that somebody is now playing man in the middle between those servers, whether EDU didn't direct me to the right spot, or what happened. But what I've done is I've added a denial of service attack. I haven't added a misdirection attack. How important that is, that's, uh, that's some, somewhat, at least I haven't misdirected you to the wrong website. I've told you I can't get to the website you want to find, which for DNS is still fairly severe. But, but I have, so I have this limitation, and essentially it's solvable in the DNS. But to solve it, whoa, okay, <laughs> too much animation there. But to solve it, I actually have to, to, to solve it, I actually have to fi fix the original problem with the DNS which is that I have the same name for the glue records in both places. If I name them differently, then I'm OK. Uh, another, just to give you one more story on why things happen to break in the standard process is, uh, so we built this. We actually standardized it. We were close to last call on the standard. We had an interop workshop. Uh, various big vendors came. We ran it, and we discovered we added a great little denial of service attack. So here's the new trick. I've got this DS record that says, what's the Purdue key? And it's stored at the parent. But every other Purdue record is actually stored down at Purdue. I could store the DS record and its signature down at Purdue, but now I've reintroduced the coordination problem. So I only have the DS record at the parent. If you go to Purdue and ask for the Purdue EDU DS record, what should it reply with? I made a sensible choice, which said, don't ask me, ask the parent. But protocol spec-wise, you don't say, don't ask me, you don't ask, ask the parent. You say, I'm not authoritative for the record you want. The resolver hears, you're not authoritative for Purdue EDU records. So what we were able to do was then send a series of queries. So you, you ask the resolver to look up the DS record by contacting all the Purdue servers. It contacts Purdue server 1. Purdue server 1 says, I don't have the DS record. So the cache marks that server is not valid for Purdue. You ask server number 2, do you have the DS record? It says, I don't have the DS record. The cache marks that server, not valid for Purdue. I, I can do this for each server, mark each server not valid for Purdue. Now when somebody comes along and asks for dub, 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 the cache already knows all the Purdue servers have already said they're not valid. There's some misconfiguration. You can't get this answer. So even a trivial thing, adding a DS record, gets messy when you do the actual complication, when you do the actual protocol. And what we need is simply a different return code message that won't, conf won't confuse previous resolvers, but will tell DNS secondary resolvers, go ask somewhere else. So essentially, I want to make it look like, no, this record doesn't exist. Yet, if you know DNSSEC, go look up here. Okay, so what we have left, and so I have just a few minutes left here, what we have left is key revocation, like we talked about a little bit. Uh, right now, we rely solely on SIG expiration dates. That's definitely a problem. We need a way to revoke compromised keys. We have incremental deployment. This whole hierarchy works great when my parent zone deploys DNS. Doesn't work so good if COM decides not to deploy. Because now I've got 30 million guys with nobody to sign their key. Uh, also, I want to support dynamic update. I did all this work to keep the key offline because I don't trust the server. But current DNS, when, I, when my laptop gets a DHCP address, I actually send an update to my server back in Colorado. It updates the DNS. That works fine. That's a widely used feature now in DNS. I've got to support that.